Hello again folks, I'm George Flew, the developer of the 3D Toolbox. The 3D Toolbox is a comprehensive set of tools for designing utility substations in 3D using plain vanilla AutoCAD. You can find details about the 3D Toolbox at my website www.the3dutility.com. However, today I'm going to demonstrate my latest program, PSAG. Now PSAG is a program for spotting power line poles based on the conductor sag. It calculates a true catenary curve based on the catenary constants derived from the conductor sag design ruling span and tension. I want to emphasize that PSAG is not a mechanical line design program, but is intended to aid in spotting poles based upon the conductor sag. So here we see our demo project for today. It's a 69 kV transmission line with a 636 26 over 7 ACSR conductor, a design tension of 6,000 pounds, a 500 foot ruling span, in medium loading zone. Now the project itself is just over 11,800 feet long and comprises a number of control points and we'll look at those as we go. First let me turn on the background grid just for reference and then I'm going to call up our PSAG program and the first thing it wants to know is our design file that we're going to use and we'll take a look at that in just a moment so here's our basic PSAG form this area includes conductor and structure information uh, the bottom part here is a number of, of uh, commands that we can use and then we have a couple of uh, arrows pointing to the left and right indicating the direction that we're, we're actually designing the line so it knows which way to actually draw the uh, sag curve so to start out we're going to go to our structure data and this is the basis for the design and in this we can uh, define of course our project description and then up to four structures uh, can be defined for each project. We start with a structure type and then calculating a distance from the top of the pole we have the overhead ground wire position, top phase, middle phase, and bottom phase. And then we have an insulator length that we can allow for in our sag curve. And then our ground line clearance based upon NESC clearances, uh, in this case for 69 kV over uh, open fields and roadways, uh, it's a 20 foot clearance and we've added an extra foot for inconsistencies in our, in our ground profile. And then we have provisions for an underbuild and a neutral and then of course the, the clearance, uh, the ground clearance for that neutral. And then below here is the description of each one of these structure types. And these are the conductor catenary constants which can be derived from the manufacturer's sag and tension charts such as programs provided by Alcoa SAG-10 and pls -CAD. And so we have a, uh, uh, a K value for each one of our con di different conductor uh, positions and, and conditions. Uh, for instance, our overhead ground wire is a 3 8 inch uh, uh, seven strand high spring steel and we've uh, got the catenary constant for a 15 degree uh, F initial uh, loading. And then our top phase uh, we've got set for 636 uh, MCM ACSR and our 15 degree F initial and then bottom phase would uh, determine our clearance to ground. We've got our, our ACSR conductor with a 212 degree F final. Now you, you pick the, the conditions that you want in the appropriate uh, catenary constants. And then down here based on the uh, bottom phase, the insulator uh, length, the ground clearance and the sag derived from our, our sag tension curves, we have determined that the level ground or default pole height for our ruling span is 55 feet. And then based upon a transverse loading uh, calculation, our default pole will be a class 2 and here's our 500 foot ruling span and then the profile itself is based upon a uh, vertical to horizontal ratio of, of 10 to 1 and so we can load various uh, designs and of course save and then once we have made our changes or made our entries here uh, when we close that information then will be loaded back here and so here you can see our our three structures that we have uh, defined and then our catenary constants and here is our default uh, pole height class and, and structure type 
and the, this uh, D, D button here pushing that will always restore this to our default height and, and structure type. Over here is a pole number. This will increment every time a pole is added. Now this can, can get out of sync uh, if you delete poles or do an undo. It will not uh, reset this increment. Uh, you can simply use these, these up and down arrows here to, to increase and decrease these one at a time. Uh, the show span and ground clearance will demonstrate here in, in just a bit. And then we have each one of our various commands that we will use and we'll just uh, discuss those as we go along. So we've talked about structure setup. Uh, we'll skip this one for now. So to begin our, our design, what we want to do is emulate uh, what I have did for many years with, with the old plastic sag curve is find the point at which the ground uh, clearance just clears the ground and then we can from there spot our pole. So to emulate that, we'll start off with an autosag, which will be based upon the, our chosen catenary constant. And we want to pick this low point on this pole. And you can see then here is our clearance curve, and then here is our conductor sag itself. Now the auto pole will come back and, and again, as we did with our template, and find the point at which the attachment point touches the uh, sag line and the base of the pole touches the ground. So clicking an auto pole, it quickly finds that and you can see here that at this point uh, the sag just passes through that low point uh, and uh, just touches the ground. For our next pole, instead of doing those individually, I've combined these into the auto design and so clicking auto design will both lay in the curve and find the next pole location. So we can uh, easily proceed through here one pole at a time. Now, from time to time, we'll stop and use our engineering judgment, and this is on a very, very steep slope. So I want to move that pole, so I use the move pole command. Uh, just click any part of this pole, and I can move it up here. I'll move it up here right into this uh, uh, flat area, and it asks me if I want to update the span. Now, I want to point out that all these sag curves and, and span numbers are temporary. Uh, now, it's popped up a warning that said that the, the new span is uh, less than 67% or two-thirds of the ruling span. So, with that, let's just move the pole again. Uh, we'll come down here to another area that's reasonably flat. And again, we will update the span, and uh, this time we don't get the, uh, we don't get the warning. Just as a refresher, uh, the guidelines say that we should limit our spans from two-thirds to 150% of the ruling span. Uh, two-thirds of our 500-foot ruling span would have been 333 feet, and obviously the 304 was not enough. So we will continue here using our default pole height and class and structure type, and again clicking Auto Design. Once again, we've landed on a steep uh, slope. So we're going to move this pole again and uh, we'll set it right here on top of this nice flat spot and we'll adjust that to just uh, for our information. Okay for our next our next pole we, we would like to go to this PI uh, so we'll go back up here and first let's change this to this, a 60 and a TS3. This is about the minimum height we would go with a TS3 based on the, the spacing and we'll go ahead and hit auto design again and uh, we'll see that uh, that that 60 is not quite going to going to take care of the problem first thing I want to do is go ahead and move it to the uh, PI and we'll update the span and then take a look at that and it looks like we probably can get by with a 65 so this time we'll use replace pole and click anywhere on the pole and we can see that our new conductor low attachment point is above the sag. So continuing from our last pole we will move on with our design. So first let's change it back to default and then we'll just uh, do our auto design and auto design again. Again everything looking good. Now we come to one here. This one has uh, gone past this fence line, uh, one of our uh, control points, 
And so I'm going to move that pole just back, just outside that fence line, a few feet. It'll ask if I want to update the span again. And uh, we'll update that. And then at this point, let's stop and look. We've got this nice even slope going down through here to our next uh, PI point. So I'm going to use another command here, which is auto span, which will give us a selection of spans of, of uh, equal span distance. It says we can either go with three poles, 570 foot spans, or four poles for 428. Well, all things being equal, three poles are going to be cheaper than four poles. So let's pick the three pole option. And uh, unfortunately, we see here, as we would expect, because this is over our our uh, ruling span, that our 55 foot pole, we might have anticipated that and gone ahead and changed that. But in all honesty, I just soon make that change. So we're going to change that pole height and do a replace pole. And uh, we can see then that that gets that pole uh, height over uh, our, our sag. At this point, we need to to, to check our sag here based on our new pole height. So we'll use auto sag, click on this low point, and we see that this this uh, uh, point looks like it's, this sag looks like it's good. I'm going to delete these two old sag lines just to get them out of our way. And uh, we'll zoom in here, and uh, it looks like we're actually just a tad bit low. Maybe you want to roll the dice with that. Uh, uh, maybe not. Um, let's uh, tell you what. At this point, let's ignore that for the, for the moment. Let's go down to this pole and uh, see what we need to do here. So I want to change that to a 60 foot TS3 to a pole replace. And uh, as you can see here, that's uh, not going to be near tall enough pole. We might then want to go back and review this. We have a problem here already. Let's go ahead and let's let's replace that with a 60 foot TS1. So uh, uh, we'll replace that. Do a new uh, auto sag, and uh, we are still short on this one. Now, one thing we can do, and this again, this is an illustration of, of using your engineering judgment. Is now that we've made that pole taller, we can actually move that pole slightly until we update our span and uh, looks like I've hit that pretty close I'm going to get rid of both of these these lines here uh, yeah, you notice that I have this the ground line uh, locked so that it doesn't uh, so that I can I don't have to worry about deleting it Let's uh, go back here and do our auto sag. And now it looks like we st we're still got a problem. Uh, so let's, uh, let's move that pole up. Increase it one more time. And uh, it looks like here that we've uh, hit it right on the nose, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So... Again, we will continue to move then, going back to our default size. We're just going to accept these at this point. Um, so we'll make sure we, we miss our street here. Okay, now we get to this one. And again, we got another one of those on that slope. So let's move that pole. We'll move it up here to the top, and uh, it also appears we can re re decrease the height of that pole. We might could get down to 40, but I think we'll run into problems if we do. So let's let's just replace it with a 45, and then let's stick with our 45 to this next hill, um, and. Uh, that, that placement uh, may be a little steep. Let's move it just uh, just a bit up the hill to this little bit not so steep slope. So looking ahead here, we can see that we've got another PI coming up. 
Now, we could continue with our auto design, but we could be faced with the problem of having a pole wind up uh, too close to our PI. So let's go ahead and use our auto spin once again here. We'll go for the three pole option. And you see we get three equal, equal spans here. Uh, let's go ahead and replace that with our 65 foot TS3 and uh, we're still going to be considerably low. Uh, but we do have an opportunity here to uh, move this pole up this hill, up the slope, and, ho and, and hopefully stay under our, our sag. And we'll update that. It's going to make a bit, bit of a long span, but we're still well within our 150% of, of uh, ruling span. And let's generate a new auto sag. And uh, we see here that that actually fixed our problem uh, and got us uh, uh, the extra clearance we need to get by with a 65 foot pole. Go back to our default. Do an auto design, and I want to do an auto design here rather than doing an auto span. This hump here uh, causes me some concern that if we try to do an, just a, a, an auto span, um, that we would have to do a lot of adjustment. However, at this point, we can do an auto span from the here to here, and we'll go with the three poles in this, this instance. And... Uh, Everything looks good here. Let's see what we can do here now. Let's go ahead and change this last pole to 65 foot. And uh, that's, that gives us our adequate pole height. Uh, I'm going to take make a uh, just a quick look at a quick option. I'm going to move this pole just up this up this hill up to the top of this little rise. It'll increase that a little bit, but it'll also give us a, uh, a little advantage on that pole height. And let's go back and see if we can save ourselves five foot of pole by just moving that one pole. Uh, and in fact, if we delete the old sag line, we can see that we actually now are able to get by with a 60 foot pole. Okay, we've we've made our first pass through here, and before we go any further, this command we passed up the ruling span, and we'll click it. Now that's going to ask us for a catenary constant uh, because it's, it wants to. It will do a, uh, a weight span calculation, and you may want to do this several different times with different loadings. I'm going to do it with our initial loading. Uh, this will be looking more for an up, uplift. If you want to do, uh, say, cross-arm loading, you would go back and have to calculate a loaded catenary constant, which we don't have here. Say OK. And we get a summary then of our ruling, our actual ruling span is 508 feet, which is excellent compared to our 500. Our maximum span doesn't exceed 150%, and our minimum span does exceed 67%. And now you notice here all of our weight spans. The weight span on this first one is negative, but that that's at uh, TS5, so that's that should not be a problem. Uh, there's no uplift on the cross arm. These all all these others look pretty good. This one here at 13 uh, could be a problem as we go back through there and look at it. But again, this would be part of the mechanical design where you would determine the uh, minimum weight span for the construction type. Now this is all put on the on the clipboard, so you can uh, paste this into a spreadsheet or or report or any wherever you'd like. And the, and it also does show the slack in the span, which is the difference between the span distance and the actual length of the conductor in the catenary. So we'll say OK. So everything looks good there. So the next thing we want to do is make a backward pass and look for uplift. And before we won't do that, we want to get rid of all of these uh, temporary lines we put in there, which is uh, we can do easily by the clean temporary, and it will just delete all of those on that temporary layer. And at this point, we want to do a backward pass, and we want to look at the initial sag. 
and look for uplift problems. So we'll go back to the what is what is shown here is the uh, 15 degree initial uh, for our 636. Then we'll click on the sag, and we'll start here not not up here at the at the overhead ground wire, but at this top con conductor position. And it draws in the sag, and this point here is at the low point of sag. And uh, ideally, you would want that to be in the middle of the uh, span, but certainly uh, uh, it, it would it's, it's preferable preferable that it be at least in the span. Though we will probably see some some that aren't. So we will just uh, go through here and do this quickly, except where we now. So here's one where the low point is actually beyond. The next pole, but when we go to this one, we see that this low point is here. So, the the weight that's been uh, uh, held up at this at this uh, cross arm is the difference between these two points. Uh, so that still we still have a, uh, a a downward force uh, on that one. Now we go to this one, and again we see this is beyond, but it's holding this weight. Again, uh, this will need to be all need to be verified with mechanical design, uh, which should have been done prior to this, so that you would know. Uh, now we come. This is at pole 13 I mentioned, and you can see this is definitely a problem because this this is beyond that, and so uh, that uh, that it will probably be a problem. Let's just stop at this point and. Uh, take the opportunity to try to correct that now. So let's uh, let's just change this to uh, 60 foot and see what we get. And we'll go back and do our sag. Uh, still seems to have a problem, so we will. I'm gonna make one more attempt here with a 65. And this looks like it could be acceptable. Again, this needs to be all need to be ver verified uh, in the uh, mechanical design phase of the project. Here's another where, where we've got the uh, low point right at the pole. Okay, so there is our initial sag, and we've gone back and made adjustments for, for, for where we found uh, uh, uplift problems. Now what we'd like to do would be go back and put in our, our final sag to show that, and when we select final here, you notice that then our show span and ground clearance both click, which indicates we're going to show the span distance at this point, and then also the ground clearance line. So now if I do a sag, the sag will give me both the span distance and will show the ground clearance line and I can continue through here. Now, I can save you a lot of time if uh, instead of going through there one at a time we will instead use the sag all which will actually put all of the sags in for all the conductors and uh, we'll just demonstrate that. It reminds you that first it needs to delete what's there which it says you say yes and so we, we come back we get our sag for our uh, for overhead ground wire uh, then we get the initial sag on the this top conductor and then we get final sag for all three conductors and then get the ground clearance sag so we come over here to a vertical and so we get the, you can see your transitions from your cross arm to your vertical on both sides. And that completes our demo and I'd like to remind you that if you have any questions or comments go to www.the3dutility.com and up in the upper right hand corner is a contacts on the menu and from the contact you can send me any comments or questions. There's also a uh, PSAG uh, menu that will take you to a page that will give you a little more explanation on some of the details of the uh, form. And I also want to remind you that if you are a 
public utility, that would be a uh, municipal utility or a uh, RUS cooperative or other government uh, public utility. All the software on my website is free. And with that, uh, until next time, thank you.